Hey, it's Ginger Ninja, and welcome to my Getting Started with PowerShell series. In this video, I'll be going over customizing your environment. So what exactly is PowerShell? PowerShell is a scripting language based on the .NET framework created by Microsoft to solve a myriad of problems. Those problems include troubleshooting, automation, as well as management of different products. Now, originally it was written and deployed on different Windows operating systems. However, now there is actually a cross-platform PowerShell version that will work on Windows, Mac, and Linux computers. So now that we know a little bit more about what PowerShell is, let's dive into some examples of how we can customize our environment. Now the first thing we want to do is launch PowerShell. On any modern version of Windows 7 and above, you should be able to hit the Windows key or Windows key S if you're so inclined and search for Power or PowerShell and then hit Enter. There it is for us. Let's hit Enter. And here we are. Now at a glance, I know it kind of looks like a DOS prompt and it's, it's not, and I promise you it can do a lot more and it is a lot cooler and fun to play with. What we want to do here though, first, is change the colors. I don't know about you, but I really don't dig the blue and white. I just, I don't, it's not my thing. So let's change that by right clicking the title bar, going to properties, and then if it's not already there, go to the colors tab. And for screen background, I'm gonna make that black for me. And screen text, I'm gonna go ahead and make that green. And I also changed my font here. Uh, I change it so it looks a little bigger for you guys to see better. And there we have it. Now you notice one thing is kind of weird. Uh, you start typing and it will look like your old background a little bit. It's just, it's kind of how it works when you change the colors for the first time. Uh, one way around that is to just relaunch PowerShell. So if we look down here, you'll see that PowerShell, if we hover over it, uh, is running, it'll show us a current window. And if we right click, we can go to pin to taskbar. I highly recommend doing that, especially if you're going to be using PowerShell more and more. Because if you do that, when you pin it, you can right click, you can launch PowerShell, you can launch PowerShell as administrator, which you'll need to do sometimes, and you can also launch the ISD from here. So let's close it. So let's open it back up. And then, as you can see, it is now the black and green, which is my preference. You can change it to however you like it. If you want to do My Little Pony, do My Little Pony. That's on you. But now that we've customized our colors, let's take a look at one of the built-in variables to PowerShell. And the variable I'll be working with right now is host. So if we do dollar sign $host, and all variables in PowerShell begin with a dollar sign. If you don't know what a variable is, just think of it as something that can hold something else. And these special variables already have a value. Typically what you would do is you'd create one and then assign it to something that you want it to have the value of. For this one, there are some special variables in PowerShell that have values that are pre-populated that you cannot use for anything else. And one of those is host. So let's look at host. And this gives us some information about our current PowerShell host, including the version. So as you can see, this is our first encounter with an object, host. Everything's an object, so is host. And if we wanted to see the version, just the version, you could do host.version. So if we wanted to access that version property, you just put a dot, type in ver, and you could hit tab to tab complete that out to version. And you can see that it gives you a more detailed representation of the current version, the major, minor, build, and revision. So that's the information that host contains, and it can give you some information about your current running environment, including the version of PowerShell that you're on. So now that we've done a couple of things in PowerShell, let's, why not write our own hello world? That seems to be the typical thing to do when you're learning something, so let's, let's do the PowerShell version of that, which is just typing out hello space world in single quotes. Let's hit enter. And it just spits it back out at us. So we were successful. Hello world, and we got it back at us. That's, that's awesome. But what exactly in PowerShell does that mean? Well, if we hit up to go back to the command that we just ran, and then we use the pipe, which is shift and then the slash above the enter key, we can pipe this, which means pass it along to get dash member. The naming convention for PowerShell commands is verb-noun. What this means is your commands will typically begin with get, set, invoke, and then dash and a noun after that. Now autocomplete does work, so you can actually type out get dash and then hit tab and just kind of tab through the different commands that begin with get dash. Uh, more on that later. Uh, right now let's dig more into what we got with get member for the hello world that we gave it. Now what this tells us is that it is a system.string, that's the type, so it's a string, and we have all these methods available to us. So we have clone, compare to, uh, to int, uh, 
two upper and two lower. Uh, and then we have one property here that's called length. So actually, let's take hello world here. And then to access the property, we want to do dot and then the property. So if we do dot length and hit enter, it'll tell us that 11 is what's stored in the length. So hello world is 11 characters long. Now, if we wanted to use one of the methods, we would do the same thing with a dot, but we would add something to it. So let's do hello world dot two upper. So now methods typically take more arguments. Uh, a property will give you a value. A method is going to do something with hello world. And sometimes you can pass it in along parameters of how you want that to be done. With two upper, we don't want to pass along any um, parameters or arguments. So we're just going to hit enter. And you can see now that hello world with the dot two upper is now shouting at us. And that's what we would expect if we're doing dot two upper. Now, if we did dot two lower, you can see that it's all lowercase, although that is how we initially input it. So if we change the H and the W, you can see that it made the H and the W lowercase. Okay, now let's move along to something a little bit different. I'm gonna show you that you can actually use the old school DOS commands in PowerShell just as you would normally use them. So let's try to ping Google here. And we're pinging Google, there we go. You can see that we get some results back and it's just as we'd expect from a DOS prompt. There's a command in PowerShell called test-connection. And what that does is something similar to ping, but it does a variant of that in PowerShell and gives you a little bit more information. So let's do test connection, google.com, and hit enter. As you can see, the, the data is formatted a little bit differently. Um, you still get relatively the same amount of information, but the way it comes back at you is very different. So to demonstrate that, I'll take this variable here, we'll name it ping, and right now you can see that it's empty. But if we do ping equal ping google.com, so we're gonna run the command that we ran, but the output's gonna go to the variable. So we're not gonna see it until we, we access the variable again. So now ping has the results of the ping. So let's see with the handy get member command, what is in ping? Looks like it's a string. So to go through this string is not impossible to get the results that we'd need to say if you wanted to log what was happening with the ping or automate something with what the ping results were. However, Let's take a look at what test connection gives us with ping. So we're going to take the ping variable that we used with that command and we're going to null it out, which means right now it doesn't contain anything. Now if we take ping and we use it with test connection for Google, we'll let it run and it'll come back as this. And if we take this and pipe it to get member, you can see that it is a very different type. It's not a string. It is a management object of a certain class, Win32 ping status, and it allows us to access different things within it. So if we wanted to go through this one by one, we could actually do ping bracket zero bracket, which will say, hey, what's the first result that we got back? Because ping actually comes back from test connection as an array. What that is, is something we can iterate through all the members of. Like if we did ping.count, you'll see that there are four responses that we received. So if you start at ping zero, which is the first response, arrays always start at zero, there's the very first response that we received. And then we do ping zero dot, uh, let's do reply size. You'll see that's how we get the bytes, it's 32 for the reply size. And you can actually go through and access whatever element of that that you want and that works in our favor for when we want to automate something because then we know exactly what we want to drill down to and what property that we want to get the, the value of. Now I'm going to show you next is a little more complex, but it's a great way to demonstrate how powerful PowerShell really is. I'll show you one of two ways that we can get a list of computers and then use that in test connection. So the first thing I'm going to show you is actually that we can take a text file and import its contents into a variable in PowerShell relatively easily. So I have this file here, it's called computers.txt, and you can see it has three different values in it. It has uh, 192.168.11, google.com, and this won't work, I don't think, that fake domain name. One of those probably won't work if we use it with test connection, but how are we to know without actually using it? So let's import that into a variable called computers, and there is a command in PowerShell called get content, and what that does is it imports the content of a file 
into the variable. Typically, it's a text file that you'd be importing from. And we're just going to pass that along to computers. We're in the same directory, so we can just do that. So if we hit Enter and we check out our variable computers, we can see that we have those three values indeed. And it is an array of strings. So if we go to zero, we'll see that that is the router one, we'll say that's Google, and uh, not three because there's nothing in three. But if we go to two, this won't work. I don't think that fake domain name. All right, so how do we use that with test connection? Well, test connection actually allows us to just pass that along in. So if we do test connection computers, if I can spell correctly, you'll see that it's starting out right now. The destination is the router and then it goes right on into Google and it oh, looks like it hit the, uh, the one that shouldn't work and it, it indeed it didn't work. The next method of using test connection with an array is a little bit different, but it does demonstrate one of the many ways that you can create an array in PowerShell. So to do this, let's do bracket system dot collections dot array list. And if you're a .NET developer, you know what that means. Uh, basically, it's a, a type of, of an array. And we're going to give it the name of computers. We're going to do equals, and we're going to make it an empty array. So at and then open and close. So we'll do computers. And we can see that it's an empty array, but we have methods to add things to it. So if we do array or computers dot add, and we add, we want to add the string here. Otherwise, we'll try to add an expression in PowerShell. We want to add Google. We're going to add the router. And we're going to add something that probably won't work. This also won't work dot told you so. And we'll do test connection computers and go. So there we go, it's going to Google. And now it's going to the router. And finally, that didn't work. So when you launch PowerShell, one of the first things it does is it looks for a profile. What a profile is, is a file named profile.ps1, which the .ps1 extension makes it a PowerShell script. And it lives in specific folders that PowerShell checks. And if it exists, it executes that code when you launch PowerShell. So to see the profile for this current host, we will do dollar sign profile, which is another built-in variable in PowerShell. And that would be the folder and file that it looks for for this profile. And so that's for this current host, this interactive console window. PowerShell is a different host in Windows as well for the ISE. And if we wanted a profile to work in the ISE, which is the integrated scripting environment or a way to write PowerShell scripts, I actually will go more into that in detail in another video, we would want to use the property from profile current user all hosts. This means give me the profile path for this user account across all PowerShell hosts. And that's the folder and file that we want to create. So test path is a built-in command in PowerShell that would give us a true or false depending on if the path exists. So if we do test path, and first let's start with the folder. We'll say that the folder does not exist. So we can create it with Windows Explorer, the old fashioned way, or we can use new item, give it the path, and do item type directory. And now if we use test path, we just actually hit up a couple times, you'll see that it's true. So now that we know that path exists, we can actually create the file with a new item. So use new item, We'll do path, and we can actually do profile, current user, all hosts to get that full path. And we want the type to be file. Now we have our profile file. So what I'm going to do now is use the start command in PowerShell with the profile, current user, all hosts. Now that we have it and it exists, it will open up in your default editor when you, when you use this command. So let's hit enter. Uh, yours might open up in notepad, that's fine. I'm going to use the code that I have down below in the description. Uh, there's a link there if you want to copy and paste from there. I'm going to copy it and paste it into my profile and go over this for a second with you guys line by line. So foreground color equal white. We just define the variable foreground color. We make it white. Time equals get date. That stores the value of get date in that variable. Again, we have the PS version that we store into a variable. The current user and the current computer we get from the environmental variables. And then we just write it out with write host. We take those variables and we use them with the greeting and we give you what time it is, what version of PowerShell you're running, and what your computer name is. 
Then we do something a little more advanced, which don't worry if you don't understand it now, which is we have the function name prompt. And what that does is it actually overrides PowerShell's default prompt and lets you create your own. So I use write host with no new line, which means keep it all on the same line. And we kind of create a custom PowerShell prompt with that code. And then we change the window title to reflect what the current user is and what our current directory is, which is what we use here with the host built-in variable. And then we use the methods to change the window title. So let's save that. And don't worry if you don't understand that all. More importantly is getting it to work. So if you save it and we close PowerShell, all we have to do is reopen it. And if all goes well, it should look something similar to this. Prompt should be different too. It should uh, be the PowerShell prompt you see here with when you hit enter, it'll reflect the current time. That about covers the basics of getting started with PowerShell. We customized our environment, went over what PowerShell is, compared an old school command, ping, with test connection and PowerShell, showed how variables worked, went over a couple of the variables that are built into PowerShell, as well as created our own to use with test connection. We also went into creating our own profile and executing that profile when PowerShell started and verifying that it worked. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, go ahead and give me a thumbs down, but also please tell me in the comments what I could do better. If you please subscribe, I will have more videos weekly on getting started with PowerShell, as well as anything else that I read in the comments and create a video for.